So let's open up Mocha here. And we've already applied a tracker to this point, but we don't need that track anymore. We're going to now apply a tracker to his head. Pretty simple, let's go ahead and scrub through this and take a look at what his head's doing. You can see that his head and his face this way most of the time. Pretty much the same direction the entire time. See the light cuts in and out here, but not going to be a huge problem. We want to find our best frame, which is going to be right around here somewhere. That looks pretty good. So let's go ahead and apply a tracking shape to this part of his head. And we're going to turn off scale and rotation and go ahead and track forward. Okay, I'll go back to this point, first point here, and then track backwards. Okay, so we've got a wonderful track there. We can see how nicely it's sticking on, no jittering. Okay, so now we're going to go click on layer controls so that we have our layer pulled up here, layer 3. Make sure that it is selected. And we can go over here and click export tracking data again. And now if we go back into After Effects, we can go Layer, New, Null Object, and paste that tracking data in. And now we can go Command Y, we're going to call this Hat. And now we can zoom in here. And we can turn off all of our layers other than our bottom layer and we're going to apply a an accurate mask here to our hat. Now we want to create not too many keyframes here and by keyframes I mean points with our mask because we don't want it to make it difficult to move them around. We don't want it to take too much time when moving them around further on down the line. So we have that hat mat. We're going to just go ahead and parent it to our null object here, which we're going to call head motion track. And now if we turn this guy on, solo him as well, we can see that it has been applied. And if we move through this, we can see that we've got somewhat of a motion track. Now we can go through and adjust this manually. So we see here, this is our first point. I like to bring down the opacity bit so I can kind of see what's going on through the hat. And what we're going to do here is hit M, and we're going to apply a mask path. So, again, we're going to look for points um, that the movement changes. So we can see that it moves to here, and then his head starts to stop. So now, once it gets to this point, we can double click and just drag out this mask to be a bit bigger. And we can just adjust these points. Another tip here is we want to make sure that our points stay in on the same position of the hat that we had it originally. So we want to apply, we want to keep these points as similar to the previous positions on the hat as possible so that the computer can do the most amount of work for us. And so it's going to inter interpolate between these two positions best if we are to keep the positions the same. So we can see here we've got some drifting off with the hat here. But we're going to just move that off to the side. And that all looks pretty good and just continue to move it down here double click move it all down click off and just drag this Okay, we can see here that his head starts to turn up. We want to 
rotate that and drag it on back there. We're not worried about this extending over the bottom because we're going to be filling that in anyways. So all we have to worry about is the top. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and just fast forward through a lot of the motions here. Obviously a lot of rotoscoping is really slow and takes a lot of time so we don't need to sit you through the three hours that took me to rotoscope this entire shot. But we can see here we're just basically following this progression of looking at the motion, finding where our movement in the shot changes its sense of velocity. And by that I mean that we see it moving from one area to the next in a straight line, so to speak. And we want to use that straight line uh, to let the computer do as much work as possible. So we're setting keyframes at positions where our velocity changes. And now we're just moving back into Mocha tracking. We can use the Mocha tracker to help a lot of the times. Uh, here we can see that we have his hand that went in front of the kid a little bit. And so we tracked uh, his shoulder as well and made that into a mat that went in front of the hand here because we see that the hand goes behind the kid's shoulder for a bit. And now we're just going frame by frame and moving this along. We can see that we're tracking onto rigid objects. Now if we want to get really detailed with this hand, then what we could do is make a very distinct keyframe for each one of his fingers, but we don't need to be that accurate for this particular rotoscope. And so we're just considering his hand to be one rigid object and we're just moving it along and we're also using another one of the uh, keyers here. We're do using the green channel to allow our hand to be separated because we can see there's a quite a, there's a decent amount of contrast between the hand and the background especially on the right side of him here where we have that fo bright fog in the background. So we're just moving through this one frame at a time. Uh, we can see, especially in the areas where there's a lot of brightness in the background, that we're able to have a little bit more give on our mask, meaning that we can make the mask extend a little bit further than his hand because we're also using this keyer here to help with our rotoscope. And we can see here we've separated his hand. We can see it, how it looks as one piece on its own. We're doing uh, the other side now. And so we're just going to skip past a lot of this and move on to the final product. Okay, so let's take a look at what we've done here. You can see that in our timeline here, we have made compositions of every rigid part of his body that we've rotoed out. So you can see here we have our top layer, which is our kid mat. And now we mentioned earlier that we had made a mat for the young kid's arm. And so we can see here that we made that. We put it at the top because we want the kid to be in front of the guy, which she is in the real scene. So that only extends for a couple of frames here, but we do have that mat. And if we take a look and double click on here, we can see how we made that. And so what we did was we rotoscoped out of that layer from Mocha, imported it here as a layer, and then we always take our original footage and we're going to always set it to an alpha mat of whatever our layer is. So if we were to take off this alpha mat, we would see that it's just the original shot here. And there's no mat, no rotoscoping applied, but when we set it to alpha mat, then it is being applied to this original layer here, which is just this nice blue solid. What we can also do here, if we want to feather it out, when importing that shape layer from Mocha, we can just add a fast blur and set that fast blur on. And we feathered it out. Even, even cooler, because a lot of times the blur that we see in real life is directional, and by that means we have motion blur. So what we can do is just apply a directional blur to our footage. Now this takes a little bit of work because we ha often we have to keyframe the motion blur because things are always changing speed but you can see that we can add this motion blur and it's going to give us a real direction here. So we can see that as we rotate this our direction little blur is changing along with it. And so he, we can see in the original shot that he's moving to side to side a bit. Uh, and so if we can turn that on and now that mat has been applied and the appropriate motion blur has been added. So let's go back into our original shot here and 
can see that we have different mats for different parts of the body. We've got our head, middle, filling in the gaps, and his arms. And so that's how we do that. Now, once we're done, we have this is a solid mat. And the reason it's colorized is because I just simply applied a color gradient to all the footage. You can see here that this was added into every shot. And um, that was just because I wanted to. I thought it looked cool. And it was easy to see what the mat was. But now that we have that final mat here. Now, again, pre compose, which is what we did for all of these different mats, is Command Shift C. And that's how we organize our layers. And now that we have pre composed that, what we can do is drag all this by hitting Command A and pre compose it again. And I'm going to call this. I'm just going to call this mat because this is really the final mat. And then I'm going to go back over here, grab our original footage, and you can see we're going to do this again. We're just going to make in this an alpha mat. And so what we see here now is that we have applied the mat only to this guy right here, and and there we have it. We have him matted out. And now if we were to bring in the same clip underneath, now we have the matted out shot, the rotoscoped out shot here, and the original shot underneath. And so if we wanted to add some sort of effect to this, let's say that we wanted to blur him out, we could easily blur him out. We're going to go fast blur. And now just our character is being blurred out. And you can see that the line here is kind of defined and if we wanted to make that less defined we could go back here into our mat and blur out our mat and now uh, once we add that to four we can see now that the lot this the line is a little bit softer let's say that we wanted to add a cool filter i mean we can we can really add anything that we want to this mat so let's delete the fast blur let's go into our presets and take a look at these presets we have here we have some background generators. Let's say we just add a pixel preset here to our top layer. And now we've made into this pixelated type of deal here. And and that's pretty cool. And now with this map, we could do anything that we want. We could even add, make this an add mode so we can still see underneath. So let's say we added that. We can see now, we can see the, the character underneath, but we've still got this nice pixelated effect that's been added on. So pretty cool. One last thing that we could do is if we wanted to add something in behind him, let's say that we wanted to add uh, motion tracked text behind him. So we've got this text here. We're going to bring it by our text. And we're going to just make this larger. So here we have some sweet text. We're going to add a gradient four color gradient to the text as well. Pretty cool. And so let's take off our effect that we added here. Pixel. And now we can put this Kel text behind him. And take off the add mode. And now we you can see that we have this this cool text that can be placed behind him in our composition. So this has been a detailed tutorial on rotoscoping. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment, email with any questions. Again, I'm, there's a detailed article in the link below on the different rotoscoping softwares there are out there. So go ahead and check that out. Until next time.